Did you know that you might have a chronic infection with a tooth with absolutely no or minimal symptoms? And it might be growing continually without even you knowing it. And possibly it was missed during your recall dental visits by conventional bite wing x-rays that are so commonly done during checkups. Infection, whether it's acute or chronic, alters the biology and the health of the surrounding tissues. So there are several specific steps that must be taken in managing them. So, how are such conditions diagnosed? And what are the key steps in resolving the infection, restoring the lost bone, and replacement of the tooth? I'm Dr. Ryan Kazami, and welcome to Hints and Tips in Dentistry. One of the most common reasons for tooth loss is infection, either from deep caries or gum disease. Either way, infection destroys the surrounding bone and can lead to significant amount of pain and swelling. So it's critical that it's diagnosed and managed early before it causes significant damage to the jawbone or spreads to adjacent teeth and structures. Now, one of the reasons why this condition may go under the radar is that it may be a chronic inflammatory type with a very slow growth and insult to the surrounding tissues. This is an opposed to an acute infection, which causes a great amount of pain and notable swelling in a very short amount of time. So how can you recognize such a condition? Now, any type of dental infection or bone loss around teeth represent themselves as these dark areas around the roots. These dark areas are known as radiolucencies, and they represent the loss of calcification and loss of bone around the root from the infection. You might also recognize it by presence of a gum tissue swelling with a possible drainage of infection or purulence. This is known as a draining fistula, otherwise known as a gum boil. Or you might also recognize it potentially on regular dental x-rays. These are known as periepical dental x-rays, which are really two-dimensional images. And unfortunately, in many, many cases, they may not accurately show the extent of the abscess, particularly if the size of the infection is quite small. So in many cases, infection can be missed on a two-dimensional dental x-ray. So for recognition for diagnosis, it's absolutely important and vital to use a three-dimensional imaging. This is known as a comb beam CT scan or CBCT, which really provides a proper diagnosis of these lesions. It provides us an accurate picture of the bone loss. We can measure it accurately. We can really see the extent of it to adjacent teeth and structures much better than with the two-dimensional uh, x-rays. Here's an example of a patient with an extensive amount of bone loss around the roots and on the three-dimensional CBCT we can see the extent of it on the outer side, on the inner side, as well as below the roots and this is a much more accurate picture which not only provides us a better and more uh, easier way to plan the treatment for this patient but also provide the patient with the important information about the condition and have them engaged in the treatment process for better understanding of the sequence and timing. Now, what are the treatment options for managing patients with chronic infection and bone loss? There are basically three options that are available. The first is performing a root canal or endodontic treatment. Root canals can be a very effective treatment for teeth with infection if the size of the infection is relatively small and also if there is no fractures or crack roots and also if the tooth can be uh, predictably restored. So certainly root canal is a viable option in those cases and can lead to a great outcome and the infection can resolve quite effectively over time. The second option is uh, a bone graft only of the defect. Unfortunately, this is not a very effective treatment 
because it does not address the source of infection. One of the principles of managing any kind of infection is elimination of its source. So if we're just removing the infection and grafting it, the source of infection is still there and it'll recur. So when it comes to managing such uh, patients with chronic infection and extensive amount of bone loss, in majority of cases, the extraction and replacement with an implant is probably the most predictable way to treat them. Now, what are the challenges when it comes to such circumstances? Teeth with chronic infection and bone loss. Well, we have extensive amount of bone loss. This is important to address in replacement of the tooth, in restoration of the bone, so we can replace it with an implant in the future time. The second challenge is having an infected gum tissue. Gum tissue is vital in the healing of the socket and also in the reparative process of such defects. So we have to consider the biology of the infected tissue. And both of these really result in a poor tissue health, a poor environment, a poor biological environment for the ridge for the healing. So these are the main challenges that we have to consider. So how do we replace such teeth predictably with dental implants? There is a three-step process of how we can replace teeth with chronic infection and bone loss. Again, the important word is predictably with dental implants. The first step is removal of the tooth, the extraction of the tooth, and cleaning the area thoroughly. The second step is bone grafting, the defect to develop the site for the future implant. And the third step is placement of a dental implant using a guided uh, approach using our digital workflow. Let's take a look at each one of these steps and how they're done. The step one is extraction and site, de uh, develop, uh, site uh, debridement. So in this case, the first thing we'll do is removal of the tooth atraumatically. Next, we remove the infected tissue by excising this inflammatory granulation tissue thoroughly from the uh, site. Because of this chronic infection, it's not unusual to have a necrotic bone uh, in the socket, so it's important to do a gentle uh, scraping of this necrotic bone to achieve a better healthy foundation and also to irrigate the area with uh, a copious amounts of uh, sterile saline. And so when it comes to managing these type of defects, these are the main four components of the first step, atraumatic extraction of the tooth, removing of the infected tissue thoroughly, scraping the bone uh, to remove any necrotic tissues, and of course, irrigation to clean the area thoroughly. Step number two is bone graft and development of the site for an implant later. Now the question is, when do we do the bone graft? Do we do it at the time of the extraction or do we do it later? The critical factor in making a decision on the timing of the bone graft is really the health of the gum tissue or the soft tissue. If we have a good, relatively healthy gum tissue, uh, both in terms of its quality and quantity, it may be possible to perform the bone graft at the time of extraction. However, in circumstances where the gum tissue has undergone uh, recession or is very thin and quite infected, it is best to stage it, let the site heal, come back in about two or three months later, and then perform the bone graft at that point. So let's take a look at the bone graft process. The first step is to select the right bone graft material. There are many types of bone grafting uh, materials that are available, and we must choose the one that's appropriate for that given defect or then, and that given site. The second part is infusion of platelet-rich fibrin, or PRF. If you recall, one of the challenges that we have is poor tissue health. The effect of the chronic infection in the surrounding bone and gum tissue really results in poor vascularization, a poor biological environment for the healing process. 
So um, because of this, we have necrotic and unhealthy tissues. We have very poor and compromised vascularity and overall a poor healing uh, potential. So that's why PRF or platelet-rich fibrin is a perfect antidote as a biological healing inducer to help us uh, reverse some of the damages from this chronic infection. Now this is typically a simple chair side procedure, about 10 minutes, where we draw several test tubes of blood from the patient at the same time. We centrifuge the blood and we get a platelet concentrate that has a high degree of growth factors in it. We then uh, use that uh, concentrate to mix with the bone graft and it really provides us with the acceleration of the bone and soft tissue healing. More specifically, it has a great, great advantage in the maturation of the soft tissue or the gum tissue, which is critical for the enhanced healing of the area. The next step in the bone grafting is placement of the bone graft complex. So what that means is that we take our bone graft material, whether we use some of patient's own bone or some of the synthetic bones, and sometimes in combination, we add that to our platelet-rich fibrin as a mixture, and we create what's called the bone graft complex, also known as sticky bone. So this material has a um, high amount of um, uh, the PRF with the growth factors mixed with the bone graft material ready to be grafted. The next step is placement of the bone graft in the socket where the defect exists. We then cover it with a special membrane, typically a resorbable membrane that holds the bone graft in place and protects it during the healing and maturation process. And then we just close the gum tissue over the graft in a tensionless fashion. Step number three, once the area has healed, typically about four to six months of healing after the bone grafting, we replace the tooth following a guided implant placement approach. What this means is that we do a new comb beam CT scan, we do an optical impression or scan of the patient's teeth, we do three-dimensional planning for our implant placement, we fabricate a surgical guide, to help us place the implant in a guided fashion and also uh, address the soft tissue deficiency using gum tissue graft if necessary at the end. Let's take a look at an example of this patient uh, who had a molar with extensive amount of bone loss from this infection. Uh, the tooth was removed and extracted and in this case was grafted at the same time. About six months later, after the site is healed, we took a comb beam CT scan, which demonstrates the restoration of the defect with adequate amount of height and width of the bone. Next, we take a digital impression of patient's teeth, which are then combined with the information from the comb beam CT scan into a software to help us begin the three-dimensional implant planning. Once the implant Planning has been completed, selecting the right size implant, the proper diameter, and more importantly, the alignment with the plan restoration. We also design a surgical guide uh, on the software, which is then fabricated using 3D printing machines. And this guide is the uh, best way to orient our implants properly according to the workup. So we place these guides onto the patient's teeth and we place the implant, a totally guided approach, giving us the proper direction, depth, uh, and position of the implant. The implant is healed after about four months and it's ready for the final impression and the final restoration. And we can see here how we were able to restore the extensive amount of bone defect back to normal to provide a very, very good support for a properly uh, selected dental implant to achieve a very predictable outcome like this. So my tips on how to predictably replace a chronically 
infected tooth with dental implant therapy. First, it is critical that we use a cone beam CT scan for proper assessment of the bone loss. Second, atraumatic extraction of the tooth and removal of the infected tissue thoroughly to make sure that the site is clean. We also perform the scraping of the bone surface to remo remove any necrotic bone, the procedure known as peripheral um, osteotomy or ostectomy. Number four, we irrigate and clean the site to make sure that all the inflammatory uh, tissues have been clean. Next, we graft the area using a platelet-rich fibrin uh, and guided bone regeneration membrane, again, using that bone complex that we discussed earlier. After the site is healed in four to six months, we come back and we follow a three-dimensional digital implant planning software and total guided placement for our replacement of the uh, implant. And last, we always pay attention to the soft tissue thickness, both its quality and quantity, and we can consider a soft tissue graft if necessary to uh, provide adequate coverage for the implant and also the proper aesthetics. So it's a very critical part of the final uh, outcome. So remember, chronic teeth infections can go under the radar and can be completely asymptomatic. A thorough regular dental evaluation and proper x-rays, specifically using the comb beam CT scan, are critical in early diagnosis and management before significant damage to your surrounding bone and teeth. If it's advanced, the only predictable option may be extraction, site development, with bone grafting and replacement with a dental implant. But this must follow a specific protocol because of the altered biology and the health of the tissues in such conditions. With good knowledge and skills on the part of your surgeon and selection of proper techniques and materials, you can predictably regain your tooth and oral health. I'm Dr. Ryan Kazemi, and we'll see you again soon on the next hints and tips in dentistry.